Hello, everyone. This is Angela, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Marin. You've got episode 128, where audiobooks count. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. We've got lots to say. <laughs> but first, we just want to be here and say hi. Thank you all for being here. We are so glad you show up and uh, listen and give us great feedback. We love it all. Um, just thanks for being here. For sure. Um, a special hello to all of our new listeners. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, a special mm -hmm. hello to our Patreon supporters. We have a lot of new patrons this month, which we are going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. This month, I mean, but actually in the last two weeks. So mm -hmm. Lisa, Essie, Marnie, Amy, Courtney, Adrienne, Meredith, Shannon, and Jessica. Thank you. Woohoo! Thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate this. I mean, seriously, you're making the podcast happen. Mm -hmm. um, you're helping us create even better and more content. And we're so excited. Yeah. Thanks for being part of it. All right. Uh, speaking of Patreon, it is a new year and we decided to simplify our Patreon community. So Patreon, if you're unfamiliar, it's a separate platform where we can connect with people on a deeper level for those of you who want that kind of support and c connection. Mm -hmm. So we've simplified every everything to just one $5 level. So at $5, you can get all the rewards. Mm -hmm. And the rewards that we have each month are two extra new episodes. One, we do a check-in, um, kind of a like personal slash homeschool check-in to see how mm -hmm. things are going for each of us, um, what's hard, what's going well, and how our self-care is going. We do one LTW extra where we share all the LTWs that don't make it onto the episode. This is a lot of sometimes media, sometimes other things. Um, and that's a really fun extra episode right. every month. Yeah. And those come right, they those get dropped right into your podcast app, which is so awesome. It's not, you don't have to go to a website. You don't have mm -mm. to go and do anything extra. It's just right there, like how you listen to this podcast. For sure. Yes. Um, and then we do whenever we have a guest on and sometimes in episodes like today, we're doing an extended um, piece of our mm -hmm. episode in just for patrons. And so right. like today, we are going to talk about our uh, 10 personal kids best audiobooks each. We're going to mm -hmm. do that in um, Patreon. Last episode we did an extra on the, our favorite apps that we use that went right. into patreon <clears throat> um we have a supporter only facebook group patrons are always first to know with any news and announcements you get a discount on classes and you get 18 months if you sign up now you get 18 months of all of our previous content <laughs> uh. so you can and listen to lots of episodes if you join we now. Really, we really just keep adding more and more content to ev uh, all the time. So, sure. I mean, it just only gets better. It keeps getting better. Right. Um, we just, we really love this podcast so much and we especially love our Patreon community. So we're committed when, even if we ever take a break on the podcast, we are showing up in Patreon continuously. And we just love connecting with you on a deeper level and we'd love to have you join us there. So if you want to see the show notes for the link, you can go there. It's patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. If you are new here, welcome. We just wanted to tell you a little bit about our podcast. We are here to help you feel good about who you are and mm -hmm. what you are already do doing as a homeschooler. Um, homeschooling can come with a lot of times fraught with insecurities and am I doing things right? Am I doing as good of a job as a teacher would do? Um, and we're here to tell you that you need to concentrate on being yourself and let your kids mm -hmm. be themselves. And then a good relationship will form, which is the basis of a good homeschool, right? Yes, we are here to help you kind of think differently about homeschooling. It's uh it's a it's a really tough job to change our minds about how natural learning really happens and so we're here to just kind of come with you along that journey and encourage you um to feel good about the natural learning, the real stuff that's happening every day um, that doesn't take a ton of work. It's not always as hard as we think it should be. Um so that's what we're here to talk to, to talk about. All right. Angela, I know it's been a, a few weeks, but the Oscars were recently on, and we love talking Oscars. So do you want to just tell me a few of your thoughts? What did you think? Well, okay. I am 
if you've been, if you've listened to our podcast, you know, in the last three years, you know, this is something we we just love movies. Martin and I both love movies. Mm-hmm. It's something we enjoy together and we enjoy talking about. So we get kind of excited mm-hmm. about the Oscars. I was I'm always excited for the Oscars. So I was excited mm-hmm. to watch them. It is kind of like the Super Bowl in our house. My kids now know like I I, I put it on the calendar. <laughs> it's a deal. Since my yeah. kids have gotten older, we all watch it together. So I really appreciate it. Um, I like movies being celebrated because I think there are so many good movies out there, you know, and I've Mm -hmm. been taking my, as my kids get older, I've been taking them to, to the movies with me, especially on the $5 Tuesdays, anything that's PG 13 or under, we all go. Mm -hmm. And so, um, they are really starting to appreciate movies too. So it's kind of become a family thing and I'm loving it. I, I liked a lot of things about the Oscars. I loved a lot of the performances. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I love, I kind of liked the no host thing again. Mm. What did you think about that? I mean, I think, I think it has, it's ups and downs. I think, um, I like that it takes less time Mm, because it's just so, there's so much to get through in the Oscars. And so, um, you know, listening to a spiel of, you know, a host is just, it's just like, come on, let's, let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. That's how I always yeah. feel. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I do kind of feel like, where's the anchors? Where's the mm. anchor? Mm-hmm. So a little bit, it'd be nice if there was just one person like mm. presenting the presenter because they have presenters who present the presenter. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> so if that were the, if that person were the same the whole time or something, you know, that would be helpful. They just don't have to do a big deal at the beginning or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I like the, that hearing from different people like Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig. I liked their little shtick that they did. Yeah. They were the presenters though, right? They were presenting. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. But don't you think they could go longer the because they, there was no host? Probably. Yeah, I think they're like we need a little comedy. So, yes, yeah, yeah, totally. And I loved that. I loved, I loved the variety there too. I did, and I know I said I liked all the performances. I didn't like. I thought there were too many performances. I think they can cut some of those out. It still is long. The whole thing is still long. Yeah. Um, because especially if you're watching the pre-show, you're really getting into it. (laughs) Yeah, true. I didn't understand why, why they did all those, all the all the songs some of them I was like where yeah like some years it's like the nominated songs and some Mm -hmm. in this year it wasn't all the nominated songs yeah yeah Yeah, so it was confusing I loved Janelle Monae she was probably my favorite part of the Oscars this year she really was I am I am having like a Janelle Monae assance kind of like I love I'm (laughs) I'm re-loving her and um it probably came from watching Harriet yeah (sighs) Yeah, I know. I just remembered how much I love her. And so I'm going to talk about that more on the LTW Extra, or I did. It's, I think it's already out. So yeah, yeah. On Patreon. So if you're a Patreon, you know already yes. how I feel <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, though I love watching the Oscars, I was disappointed. I wasn't as interested in the movies this year. Usually mm-hmm. I try and see them all before the Oscars are on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was excited to do that, like in January. And then um, once the nominations came out, I was kind of like, oh, you know, I don't really, I'm not really into seeing some of these. I feel yeah. like I want a bit more diversity. And I, I think last year we had some, a lot of diversity and I felt um, like we were making progress. Right. And so I was, a, I was a bit, <laughs> I was a bit disappointed this year and I just yeah. wasn't excited to see some of the movies like the Irishman I'm sure they were good movies I'm sure they were really good movies I just wasn't yeah. that excited about them so yeah I I am completely I'm right there I'm yeah. right there with you I yeah. really wished for more variety I mean it just it makes it richer it makes it a full more full experience for me yeah you know when I am hearing from other people you know and so anyway yeah so hopefully in the and I think sometimes it takes a wake-up call like this year maybe to be like oh yeah we gotta <laughs> hopefully Hopefully. I hope. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, let's start talking about audiobooks, which we... Yes. Which I've been calling ear reading in my house for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Because I want my kids to know um, that it's reading. It's Mm. just one... So I'm I'm calling it eye reading and ear reading. I'm making the distinction between the two, but calling them both reading. Are you doing that? Yeah, I do a lot. I mean, I think I switch between audiobooks and ear reading, but... Um, they know 
yeah. that ear reading is is a thing in our house for sure. Yeah. So yeah. And so we want to demystify it a little bit and help you help us too and everybody to understand that there are so many good benefits mm -hmm. to listening to audio content. <laughs> um, and sometimes they are overlooked because it's a kind of a hands off thing for the parents sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's reading aloud that the parent mm -hmm. or parent is involved in. If a child is listening to books on their own on like an audio book content, um, it's really hands off. And so it can feel like eh, I'm not doing much or mm -hmm. my child is on a device. Um, so I'm not sure this really counts. Right. It seems too easy. It seems Almost. too easy. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not doing much work this seems not right. <laughs> yeah. Almost. And also it's it's not a traditional mm. way of re reading. Yeah, right. In the past it hasn't been credited as a way to read. Um and I think we kind of need to change that mm -hmm. that narrative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I but I think it's a slow process too. So um, I think the more we talk about it, the more we do it, the more we make it normal, mm -hmm. um, the easier it will be for more people, I think, to get on board with it. But it's going to take time probably. Right. Uh, so let's start talking about some of the benefits of uh, ear reading. Yes. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Martin. Why don't you start? Okay. So especially for ear reading, I think one of the great benefits is you get to actually hear somebody reading a great story that that, that child may not be able to read on their own. So mm -hmm. they're getting like the best example of reading. So they are getting um, amazing writing skills like um uh, have like parts of a story mm -hmm. you, you know all the parts of a story the voice of a of a of the an author, author mm -hmm. um which is something i have to say like voice is a very hard thing to teach mm -hmm. i've tr i've taught voice <laughs> and voice is a very difficult thing to teach directly <laughs> i've tried it i've taught i've taught this um as an elementary school teacher, it's very difficult. Um, but as you listen to stories, it's it is it's like infused in you. Mm, it's yeah. just such an amazing way to learn voice, um, sentence structure. These are all things that just like happen. The the learning just happens. Um, organization, um, and it could be in a story. It could be just organization in general uh writing too um vocabulary oh my goodness like vocabulary is maybe one of the best one of the one of the most obvious things because you hear it in you know your kids daily talking <laughs> i know you yeah. you've definitely heard that i've heard that so much like oh my goodness like where did you hear that word it was in a book so yeah and i think I think this is the benefit of ear reading over eye reading mm -hmm. because I think when a child is eye reading, they're missing so much. They're, they're not catching all of those things, you know, and, and even me, when an adult, when a good reader is eye reading, I right. am missing a, a lot of those things. I am missing the voice. I am missing how the sentences are supposed to go. Sometimes I need to reread a sentence to figure out the cadence. Sometimes I don't know how a word is pronounced. And so I'm guessing. And so when mm -hmm. you are listening to it on audio, you are hearing all of those things correctly. And then I think all of those things make you a better speaker and writer. Yes. And so I think these things you can learn in lots of other ways too. But I have to say, your reading seems like the most natural, easiest, um, just, it doesn't feel efficient. like it's efficient. Mm -hmm. it, it's, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like I want to say, like, you don't even know you're learning. Mm -hmm. You're just listening to a great book. And these things just seep into your mind, really. I mean, it's just, it's like osmosis. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I've noticed this, especially, I've noticed this with all of my kids, especially mm -hmm. my youngest, because he's been listening to audiobooks the most and the longest. Like, you know, yes. we hopped on board that train, um, you know, and he was the youngest. So he's, yeah, he's gotten yeah. it from the youngest age. Um, and the way he speaks, I can tell 
He's an audiobook listener. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he's... the way he writes. So when you say the way he speaks, is that his vocabulary? Or... Um, his vocabulary, um, sometimes his sentence structure. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had to help him write a paper because he's in this um, hybrid school right now. So he's going to school a couple days a week. Um, and I had to help him write a paper. And he, it just <laughs> naturally... He knows what a sentence should sound like, you know, like he knows (laughs) where the commas should go and he says it. He's not physically writing it with his hands. He's Mm -hmm. telling he's saying how the sentences should go because he knows it's like it's naturally in his brain. And I feel like the sentences, I mean, and I, I I don't know if this is what another thing that you think about your children, but like the sentences are longer, more complex. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have layers. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, and. I, I feel like my kids really get metaphors and similes mm. and they're inferring, yeah, you know, things from a text without explicit, you know, writing of it. Like they're, they're, another one is like onomatopoeias. You know what I mean? Like all these things, <laughs> is that funny? I know. It's just like all these things, all these um, writing tools that I learned in high school and college, even some of them, like I feel like they're just, my kids are just naturally, they have them. Right. They're naturally picking them up. They probably don't know the names of them or necessarily what they're learning, but they know they know it. And then some other things kind of like that um, just help make you a better reader, which is like making connections. My kids make connections to books. And then um, when since they do that a lot then they can make connections a lot like when we're watching a movie when we're meeting somebody for the first time it's just easier to make connections Mm -hmm. when you're doing it a lot by listening to books um they're great at asking questions like what does this mean Mm -hmm. i wonder you know because um in, in an audiobook there's something there's something about like the the narrator keeps going even though you didn't necessarily get this part but mm-hmm. somehow you pick it up mm-hmm. eventually mm-hmm. but like you kind of hold it in you and you're like I wonder what that is like what mm-hmm. does that mean mm-hmm. and then eventually it gets answered in some way and I think that is just really amazing it's yeah it is like nothing you could ever plan in a in a homeschool situation <laughs> right ever right the other thing I really appreciate about audiobooks is it's mm-hmm. teaching my kids and me that reading is fun. Mm, yes. Um, and so it's another way to present stories. It's another way to tell stories beyond a physical book. Yes. Um, it's introducing them to, like, if they start out with audiobooks, you know, um, they learn that they love to read or they love a certain author or they love this kind of genre. Right. And so then when they can read with their eyes, then they know, oh, you know what? I've done this before. I can do right. this. I like this kind of thing. And they remember, oh, yeah, books are really good. Like, yeah. a lot of books are really good. I'm motivated to work on reading now. Mm-hmm. I'm really motivated because I know how good this book is probably going to be. Or, you know, mm-hmm. or I, I think a lot of times what my kids, how my kids have learned to read is by first listening to uh, the audiobook. Mm-hmm. And then they're so familiar with audiobooks. Sometimes they listen to audiobooks like 20 times, mm-hmm. the same book. Um, and then they get the physical copy of the book and they I read it. And it's just like this scaffolding that happens. Like they got some s- support in reading that book because they're f- so familiar yeah. with the story and the words. And so reading it doesn't seem like such a feat. Right. It's kind of like an it's an easier entry into um, reading totally. or stories or all of these harder topics. It, it's definitely an easier way in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, it helps kids understand their preferences. It helps them understand what even genres are. Um, I think because when you're ear reading as a uh, five, six, seven, eight year old, you don't have a huge library, a collection of books that you've maybe read on your own yet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or maybe you've read none, you know, on your own at that age. Um, And so how do you even but your mind is definitely able to understand genres it's just like 
the the eye reading part maybe hasn't caught up with that yet. And so you don't know like what kind of genres you like to read or Mm -hmm. what kind of genres are out there. If you're listening to audiobooks, your library of books that you've read is so can be so huge and you can start to even at such a young age understand well I really like fantasy Mm -hmm. and then or whatever it is I love historical fiction I Mm -hmm. love the who was series Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. or whatever because um you you have enough basis to go on you you have enough history of reading that's so good. You can be exposed to lots more at a younger age when you might be ready for it uh, emotionally, but you're you're not ready to to do the eye reading, right? right? And that goes along with like um, just learning information too. You can learn so much information, even though your eye reading skills might not be um, ready to read all that information to you. With ear reading, you can learn like a world of information. Your brain is ready for that. Yeah. Sometimes, you know. Right. I could keep going on about this. I mean, yes, seriously. Sure. And okay. I maybe w- I will in stories this week or something okay. because there's so much more yeah. <laughs> to say. I mean, I feel like you and I could probably talk about why I reading, listening to audiobooks is so good for like, I mean, we could have a whole podcast just about that. <laughs> right. I think like a whole new podcast, a not whole just an new episode podcast <laughs> with episodes every week about yeah. why you're reading is so good. Um, but we probably should stop. We've got more to talk about. Um, but we'll probably, you know, I will, I'll keep talking about this. Yeah, for definitely. sure. I mean, we've talked sure about it a lot too. before. We actually have an episode that we did on this. I don't know, probably in our first year. Yeah. Called where we demystify audio content. Audi- yep. Mm-hmm. It wasn't audio. a great title, but We're it was better. a great episode. <laughs> it was a great episode. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So if you want to listen to us like two years ago, talk about it, you can listen to that too. Yeah. Um, but I have been thinking a lot about privilege mm-hmm. and um, something doesn't sit right with me. I think when people say, do audiobooks count? Mm-hmm. Or um, mm-hmm. I don't think audiobooks count. And I feel like um, I see this a lot online. Like when people are um, talking about their own reading lives or their kids reading lives or whatever, or and it, it's always like, are you counting audiobooks or that doesn't count? And I think actually most people probably think it counts. Um, but there's always a few people who are really mm-hmm. um, believe in eye reading. And I, I, in like the, the sanctity, is that the right word mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. of eye reading? Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I can understand they hold it up above above everything above everything the ear reading. Yeah, above, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah and I understand sure. that position. I really do. But something wasn't sitting right with me and then I started to realize I think it's because um you know, I have kids who are differently wired. You do. A lot of us mm-hmm. a lot of our listeners do. And so I was thinking I think it's a position of privilege to say no I reading or I reading is the only thing that counts like reading mm-hmm. a physical book is the only thing that counts because I think when you really look at it you're getting the same information you're getting the same story it's just one is with your eyes and one is with your ears <laughs> and mm-hmm. both are both are good for different reasons you know both are developing different skills yeah but it's just a different way of taking in the information and I know as a teacher um, you know, we are taught a lot about learning styles, right? And some people um, are visual, and some people use their ears, and some people are kinesthetic. And, you know, um, I think this is one example of just it's a different learning style. Some people take it in better through audio and some mm-hmm. through their eyes. And I think whatever works for you is great. But I don't yeah, think one is absolutely. better than the other. I think they're both so good. Like if you actually lean towards eye reading, I think that is really amazing and great. I also think it's probably good for you to listen to audiobooks too mm. because of all the things we just mentioned. Like there are mm-hmm. so many good things about audiobooks and vice versa. If you're just listening to audiobooks, it's probably really good to, you know, do some eye reading because there are good things about that too. Mm-hmm. Um but like today we're talking about ear reading and I think it's just so important to to understand the value 
mm-hmm. of ear reading. Right. Because it, it, it is. It's very valuable. And I think um, for someone like me, I grew up definitely with the learning difference that I had no idea about. And <laughs> if somebody would have told me, especially I would say, I mean, I knew probably by second grade, I was reading differently than everyone else. Mm. And um, if somebody would have told me back then, but I mean, even... Oh, especially I would say probably around fifth grade that like I could just listen to audiobooks and like read all the books my friends were reading. Mm-hmm. I would have, you would have been my best friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Cause all I wanted to do was read books, the books that my kids my, my friends were reading. And I just, I could, I couldn't go there. I just couldn't mm-hmm. do it. I could read. I mean, I could certainly read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good reader, but I am not, I, I, you know, I couldn't read a whole novel necessarily mm-hmm, mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. that age. So, and I feel like now as an adult, listening to audiobooks has like opened my world up completely. Yeah. Like, I feel like, uh, I feel like, uh, I mean, you know, like eyelids have been lifted from my eyes. Like I can, it's just amazing. Yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. So. I feel similarly. I, I've always been an eye reader. Um, mm-hmm. But recently I've started listening to audiobooks and what's interesting is I I thought and I a lot of my friends will um, recognize this that, you know, mm-hmm. and I've said it before on here, I think that I'm into nonfiction books on audio, but I can't really listen to fiction. I could, it couldn't really hold my mm-hmm. attention. And what's interesting is the more I listen to fiction, the mm-hmm. more I like listening to fiction on audio. And now that I've developed that skill, because I kind of think it's a skill that you need to, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a practice. Sure. Um, now that I've developed that skill, I now when I go to I read, I think, oh, this is kind of boring. I mean, like, mm. I'm hearing my voice <clears throat> say this in my yeah, head. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's good. But it's, I, I kind of would rather listen to this great narrator say it. Mm-hmm. Um, because then I can kind I can relax. And concentrate yeah. on what is going on in the story. Yeah, yeah. It adds a lot to the story. So it's much more interesting to me than reading it with my eyes. Right. And for me, and I know this is true for so many people, especially kids, um, I think better when I'm moving. And so mm-hmm. I listen to audiobooks while I'm walking, hiking, yeah. Yeah. and um, or driving. If I'm doing folding clothes, if I'm doing something else, like I can really get through a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> I really can. I mean, if I can even just listen to a five or 10 minutes at a time, it's, I get through a lot. Right. And I couldn't sit down for that minute, that long and read a book. There's just no way. It's not possible. I'm a very busy mom. So well, but and I, also you're using your body, and so you're using your body kinesthetically to yes, yes. take in information, which totally. is healthy and good. And just think of, I mean, I think so many young people are really, really need that. Really do. Really yes. need that. And it's not uh, It's not just kids being silly. It's just, a, it's a real um, need. Um, and I, I agree with you. It is a, a privileged position. And I mm-hmm. think about that now that I I have, you know, we have a diagnosis from for some of my kids. And I just think um, if I wouldn't have thought about that, if I would just assume that they um, need to I read, that's the way to do it. Um, our kids would be miserable. My kids would be miserable, mm-hmm. honestly. And so would I. We'd be arguing we'd be fighting a lot um I would have expectations that were just really not realistic for them Mm -hmm. and instead of enjoying reading they would probably hate reading Mm -hmm. honestly they Mm -hmm. would and right now my kids really like like reading yeah right (laughs) um and it's it is not to be understated how big of a deal that is it's a really huge deal because if our kids enjoy reading now If they start to learn, you know, the love of a good story, a good book, a good, good authors, um, good writing. Now, this is going to take them through any kind of higher education that they will do. They will want to read and learn for the rest of their lives. And that is, isn't that like kind of our goal? Main goal? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Lifelong learners and, um, 
people, humans who are interested, who are curious, you know, who are searching and learning all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just a big win. It's It's just a a huge win. It's a big win. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand me or you at all. Um, I think the skill of reading with your eyes is crucial. (laughs) Like, I am not at all saying that, like, if you just ear read, you don't need to learn how to eye read. And I think the skill of reading with your eyes is crucial. It's important to practice. My kids, I want my kids to practice that every day. But Mm -hmm. it is not their main method of taking in stories. Mm hmm. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I totally agree. Yep. We, they have to learn reading, um, eye reading or yes, they need to learn eye reading. And I mean, there's a level of, you know, spelling and the physical writing part that's also important to like learn to do. Um, and there's also, I think like a capacity for that where, especially for my kids, I'm thinking like there's a capacity where, um, they they can learn it and then the rest is just like probably a little too much for them so mm. we all have that capacity we just have to learn where that is for mm. for each person mm-hmm. and for some people it's like the sky's the limit mm-hmm. for eye reading mm-hmm. you know writing and that is just really really awesome and right. i think there's just like there's such a diversity in right. that right yeah in human beings i <laughs> just want to take away the shame that maybe you feel or maybe other people are trying to place on you um, when your kids are listening to audiobooks or when they're you're reading um, and help you to know that it is valuable, just as valuable as mm-hmm. eye reading. And mm-hmm. in some ways, they're learning skills that they could not learn with their eyes. Mm-hmm. Just like when you're eye reading, you're learning skills that you can't learn with your ears. So I just think um, they're somewhat a different set of skills, but still you're absorbing a story and mm-hmm. you're learning to love that and that is crucial and important. And so Absolutely. let's take let's just stop like stop um asking if audiobooks count. <laughs> they count. I would love that. Yeah. I would love that cuz I don't want I don't want like my kids to hear that, you know, do audiobooks count? And I wish mm-hmm. I I would hope in that it becomes more of a thing. I would hope that schools be, um, figure out a way to provide audiobooks for kids. Um, like you were saying before, I think when we were talking about this a couple of days ago, you were saying they are giving kids iPads, so they could figure out how to give kids audiobooks. <laughs> and maybe Definitely. they do. Maybe, maybe I'm sure some yeah, schools yeah, do. Yeah, I'm sure some I'm schools sure. do. And so I, I just hope it becomes yeah. more of a regular thing. A regular thing. Like it's yeah. a choice. It's a, lot, a lot more choice in that. I mean, I can see where there would be you know, regular ear re- eye reading time, maybe regular ear reading time, and then like a choice time. Mm-hmm. There should be, you know, I think it, all three are really, really valuable. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. So let's talk about the practical a little bit and mm-hmm. how we are actually getting audiobooks. Yeah. Um, I, you know, when my kids were younger, we, mm-hmm. we had CDs. And I think some of you probably still have CDs <laughs> and, yep, yep. and those are great. I actually just sold. <laughs> I had a basket of 37. I know because I counted them <gasps> so I could sell them. Wow. Like picture books with a CD included, like a matching <gasps> CD. And my kids would, that's what they would use during their rest time. That's wow. how I kept, and car rides and things like that. And then I had a little yeah. portable CD player and somebody bought it from me on Facebook Marketplace. So <gasps> I'm very happy for them. And I felt sad that we were letting that go. I but bet. yeah, I, that, I have fond memories of that time. And I think you can still get CDs from the library. You can, yep. what I did was I got those Scholastic book, do they still do those? The Scholastic book, book orders? Yeah. Order. I got my mm-hmm. hands on one of those and I just ordered a bunch of audiobooks mm-hmm. from there because they were mm-hmm. cheap. So, yes, I think CDs are still a great way. I think I don't remember ever having audiobooks on CD. I think my kids are just just young enough to maybe we've a we little bit older on, than, on the next. Yeah. yeah, the next wave of we started with um, iPod Nano Nanos. Yeah, they're little silver things. <laughs> we Very just got small. rid of our last iPod Nano. Okay. We were still yeah. using it a couple months ago. Yeah. They're we great. had older versions of those, though. They're yeah. like, I mean, they yeah, they're so small. Old. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah. So I think I bought ours from a family member, like a cousin or something for like 20 bucks each mm-hmm. <laughs> little yeah. iPod nanos. Yeah. So those, I don't know if we, I think they're still, they don't think they're making them anymore, but no. they were so great. Yeah. Um, cause you could, the only thing is they didn't have Bluetooth, but you know, you have to plug them into your computer and you could just download so many, so many audiobooks and right. podcasts. And things right. Like. For sure. Yeah. Actually, so. I really like those. And mm-hmm. I think that's still a great option if you can find like any MP3 player. I know they sell like, um, oh, yeah. You know, non Apple version MP3 players on Amazon. So if you can do that, I think those are great because there's no internet on it. <laughs> so you mm-hmm. are, you can just like get an audiobook from Audible or something and put it on there. But yeah. I think um, a lot of the audiobook places now are going to like just streaming on an app. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you need an app for it. Which is a little bit unfortunate, I think. But I know that's just the way technology is going. Right. Right. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So probably your and my most used source of audiobooks is Audible. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. I mean, we've used it for years. And we have, I mean, so many of our favorite books. Mm Mm-hmm audiobooks we've gotten from audible and um we have the app now which is really awesome Mm -hmm. we have the apps everywhere so um we are going to actually talk about some of our favorite audiobooks on patreon yep so i i cannot wait i like i want to start talking about them right now but i'm not (laughs) going to but so many books from audible that we've used over the years oh my goodness so the good thing about i mean i am i like audible i still love audible it 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 is the I would say like it has every book available is on any book available is going to be on audible for purchase. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's got the biggest library. There are other now streaming services and things you can use that don't have all the books. So you can look around for them. Yes. Yes. So, and here's the thing about audible, which I'm sure you all maybe all know this already, but so it's a membership. You can get a membership. Mm -hmm. So if you get a membership, you get one credit per month or however many credits you want to buy per month. Um, But then also there are sales. You don't need to be a member to get the book sales. And there are, there are always children's book sales. Yeah. A lot of times the children's books are cheaper than the adult books. Most of the time they are. And so they are maybe worth the $4.95 or whatever, especially if you're going to listen multiple times Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. buy, to buy one of those books. Yeah. But those you keep then they're, they're yours forever. They're yours forever. You download yep. them, they're yours forever. Um, and then, so another app that I have used probably in the last year, and I think maybe you started to sometime in the last year, is Scribd. Mm-hmm. I also love Scribd. It is a subscription service also, but mm-hmm. it's all, um, you don't ever own a book. You mm-hmm. stream it. Or, well, you can download it, but you don't you don't own it. Um, own it. I would say Scribd is a lot like Netflix, because yeah. it has about the same amount of books that Netflix mm-hmm. has movies. So you know how Netflix sometimes has the movie you want to watch. That's the way Scribd is too. Sometimes mm-hmm. it has the book you want to watch or want to listen to. Um, some A lot of times it doesn't though. So, but you're paying much. It's like, I think it's like eight or $9 a month and you can listen to I feel like it has for me. It has I. It has more than Netflix for you me. Think? Like mm. usually, the book I want is on there. Not always, but usually. Mm. Um, but sometimes it's not available. That's the other thing. Yeah, like, they kind of try and limit you a little bit. Listen to maybe two or three, mm-hmm. maybe a month. Then it they they limit. They you. make you wait. Yes, and they'll say your next. You, you know, this title will be available like in a week or something right. like that. Right. Right. So those, that's the downside of Scribd. Right. The other thing I'm loving lately is Libby. It's the library app. And mm-hmm. so, you know, some libraries use it, some don't. Mm-hmm. And what is great about this is that it used to be when you wanted to get audiobooks from the library, they had like a really clunky, um, user-unfriendly apps to use mm, yes. to get these audiobooks where I had a hard time searching and then once I got it I had a hard time playing it and so I kind of had given up on getting mm. audiobooks from the library for a few years and then along came Libby and it is the most user-friendly interface 
<laughs> yeah. Really I love easy. it so much. Here's the thing, though, with audiobooks from the library. I feel like the ones I want are, I still have to wait for them. Oh, for yeah. a really long time. Yeah, it's like the library, so, so you got to put them on hold. Yes. Yeah. So that, I sometimes just can't wait. <laughs> for yeah. me, if I'm excited about a book that I want to yeah. listen to, I will just find a way to listen to it. Yeah. I understand that. I have a I have an ongoing list of like 12 books and then I just yeah. go to Libby and reserve them all. And then whichever one comes in. Hopefully there's one available mm-hmm. at that time. Um so I'm really liking that. I know other ones are like Hoopla. Yes. Um and Hoopla I think now I'm new to Hoopla. Mhm. But I think there's like a limit you can get a, like 3 or 4 a month or something like that. And maybe Oh really? Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's just for where I am at right now mm. with my okay. library. Could okay. be. There, okay. But I think sometimes there's limits on Hoopla. Okay. Um, another app that I love or that I have loved in the past, we actually aren't using it right now, is Epic. It's great for kids. It has a lot of actually ebooks, um, and then it has a lot of picture books that the that kids just read, I read. Um, but then they also have um, an audiobook section. And we used we bought this especially when our kids were into the boxcar children because they all mm. the boxcar children books were on Epic and <laughs> there are a lot of them. Yeah. So um, it was worth it for us to get that subscription almost just for the boxcar children books. Um, they also have this great section where um, they have a picture book and it and it's like a read to me book yeah. so you can press it and the and it will read the the picture book to you which i think is like such a great hybrid of mm-hmm. eye reading and ear reading when you can follow along with um with an audio it's just like kind of best of both worlds yeah really for sure <laughs> so we've loved epic in the past we haven't used it lately as mm-hmm. our kids get older yeah. i think it's becoming less and less um it's, useful but- it's for young kids mm-hmm yeah. Mostly, right? Yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, technically, all of my kids, there are books for all my kids on there. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just depends on the interest level. Like, even the, the interface is kind of kid-ish. So, yeah. like, sometimes older kids are totally fine with that. Sometimes younger kids are not fine with that. They're like, I need something more grown I'm, up. I'm not a kid. Yeah. So it's kind of it's yeah. kind of your preference, really. Right. Right. There. The last app I want to talk about is Sparkle Stories. Sparkle Stories makes their own original stories for children. They Mm -hmm. are beautiful, Mm -hmm. magical, heartwarming. uh, Uh, Yeah. Perfect stories. (laughs) Uh, I mean, yes. Like, you know, all those, the list of great things that come out of ear reading. I mean, this all happens in Sparkle Stories. They kids really make connections. I mean, I think that's just a really huge one. Um, and there's lots of vocabulary, and uh, there's social skills that get learned, and compassion. Um, it's just, it's just, there's just so, it's just so rich. It's rich, yeah. It's so rich. It would be worth. I think they have a free trial. If you've never mm-hmm. tried it before, you could try it for. I think maybe fifteen days for free. Totally worth yeah. it. Um, they also you, have a podcast. Oh yeah, where, where they, they have free have, stories. They have free stories. Yeah. So if you just want a free story once a week, go there or like you know find their library of podcasts or whatever. Yes. But um, the app is great because then you have them all right there. Your kids can use it if they want to, and um, there are so many more stories than just on the podcast i mean just a plethora it's amazing and there's even they even have audio stories for older kids they do yep definitely okay uh i think that is probably good for our Mm. audiobook conversation yeah (laughs) Um, we're gonna have to stop somewhere we're gonna (laughs) we like we said we could talk more and we will in patreon so definitely you can look forward to that Mm -hmm. let's move on to loving this week all right ltw Angela, what are you loving this week? Okay, I have something I want to talk about, which is toilet paper. Mm. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to get to my LTW, which relates in a minute. But thank you <laughs> to our friend Amanda, who started me in started me thinking about this. So the credit goes to Amanda. Um, if there is a report put out by the National Resources Defense Council (NRDC) mm-hmm. called "The Issue with Tissue." Mm. And I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes. Um, 
This talks about how toilet paper is destroying virgin forests in Canada. Oh, wow. Our use of toilet paper is cutting down forests. And it's cutting yeah, down yeah. like, um, it, which it's cutting down massive boreal forests in mm. Canada, which are home to, of course, lots of different species. And a lot of oh, over 600 indigenous communities use these forests. Oh, my gosh. And so it is really embarrassing, actually, mm-hmm. really embarrassing. So um, that is that we're just like over here, just using our <laughs> fluffy toilet just, paper. We need like, this like really this fluffy really white three ply <laughs> toilet paper, right? And a couple extra just. <laughs> So Just anyway, because <laughs> anyway, keep going. Anyway, I decided I needed to do something about my family's mm-hmm. toilet paper consumption, basically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to make this a goal, so I did a couple things. Number one, I got a Hello Tushy. What is that? Uh, okay, <laughs> Nierka, who is a patron, told me about Hello Hello Tushy, so thank you. Um, this is a bidet, and. Okay. It is a very is, oh, okay. A bidet, <laughs> a bidet is an attachment to your toilet that you, shoots water and cleans yeah. you off with water, right? Gotcha. Um, I knew about bidets, but mm-hmm. in my, I never wanted to get one because they were expensive. You needed like complicated. You needed electrical hookup. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I didn't know if I wanted to really do this. Well, this is a an inexpensive. Easy to install bidet. It's seventy nine dollars, which is about how much I spend on like three big packs of to- two big packs of toilet paper. So I was like, I can do this, right? Yeah, right, um, right. So it's seventy nine dollars. It was very easy to install. Within like fifteen Great. minutes, it was installed. There's easy instructions, right? And it helps you to use less toilet paper. Yeah, we'll just say that. Yeah. So That's awesome. I am loving my Hello Tushy. Um, the other thing I did was I. Uh, got a subscription to Who Gives a Crap, and this is toilet paper that mm-hmm. is sent and to you, you. You give a crap, so <laughs> I do. It's great. This That's is awesome. these are like their marketing <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to give them my money because of like their website. <laughs> yeah, like and their well marketing. Done. Yeah, good job. good job. Yeah. Um. So this is one hundred percent recycled toilet mm-hmm. paper awesome. delivered to your house. As a subscription, mm-hmm. it costs the same as the kind that you buy in a big pack, right? Mm-hmm. It is just as um, soft, <laughs> just really? as soft and strong. Yes, That's what I was wondering. Yep, um, it looks recycled, so it's not like pure white. So yeah, but um, so you can tell it's recycled. But the other Great. thing is, selfishly, I hate buying toilet paper. Yeah. I hate going to the store and putting toilet paper in my cart right takes up the whole cart i i dread when i have to get toilet paper so this eliminates me shopping for toilet paper and it delivers it to my house in all recyclable packaging which i really appreciate so the toilet paper i'm using is not cutting down the forest oh so i feel good about this so i'm really trying to cut down my usage in this area that is awesome yeah, I I'm you're convincing me about the bidet too. I really? never thought I'd be a person, but who would have a bidet? Well, but I mean seriously, it's it seems so simple and easy. Well, like their um, marketing says too, like if a bird poops on you, would you wipe it off with toilet paper? No, no, I you'd know. get like you'd yeah. wash it off. <laughs> get a little liquid on there, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh my goodness! It's so true. So if you true. want a good laugh, you can go to each of their websites because they're like their marketing's amazing. Yeah. They're talking about poop, you know. Like this is like the um, if you are into like poop jokes and stuff like that at your house, you could just <laughs> you could send your young children to this website yeah. for a good laugh. Send your nine year old there. <laughs> I love it. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. I actually, I mean, I was convinced about getting the. The toilet paper. I have been waiting to move into a permanent home yeah. since we're traveling okay. this year. I don't want to do recurring things until yeah, I, I know till we're in a regular place. But I have been working. I've have been more thoughtful about the toilet paper that we are getting. I'm getting recycled toilet paper um, because 
I mean, looking at the list um, of like how bad the toilet paper is, the our favorite brand was like the one of the worst. Yeah. So this the issue with tissue report. Yes. Ha- um, calls out all the toilet paper brands yeah, and how bad yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> he like gives them. And a mine score. is like the worst. One. Of yeah. The worst. Well, I think like most of them are like got like a D or an F rating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're all yeah, bad, but they're all pretty bad. But anyway, yeah, uh, uh, that I would read the issue with tissue. I think it's really okay. enlightening. Okay, It'll, yeah. So great. <laughs> That's awesome. What are you loving this week, Marin? Okay, I am loving. It. <laughs> this is so different than yours. It's okay. I'm loving mine fast, is unique. I'm loving a fast food app. <laughs> mm. okay. uh, it's the Chick Fil A app. Oh yeah, and here's why: I can order food. Wherever I am, I can find the closest Mm Chick-fil-A, order food, and then when I get there, I can just push a button that says, I'm here, (laughs) and then they bring the food out to me. So no lines, and also, I mean, I just, just all of it. No lines, no getting out of the car. It's all the things that I don't like about like picking up food on the way home or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it just takes all the all of that away. And I just feel like some of those, some of the fast food places, kind of like Chick Fil A, um, I don't know, places that aren't McDonald's. I think <laughs> you know, like um, it's like this next level of fast food they claim to be a little bit better than mcdonald's right exactly Mm -hmm. and i feel like they're getting so busy and so popular that Mm. it's i'm i don't want to go there yeah you're right you can't even even go to chick-fil-a no you can't go to chick-fil-a anymore it's too busy for me yeah i don't like it and chipotle same thing yes too busy i agree and well i love that chipotle you can order on the app too but you can't go there and pick. Yeah, but you can't. You don't get a front ha- parking spot. No, that's what I, I want. That's a problem. That's what's exciting about this Chick Fil A app is yes. that you get a front parking spot. Yes, they have special parking spots just for the curbside pickup, and then that's it's amazing. Just great. I know because I'm you, so happy about it. <laughs> because Chipotle needs to follow suit. Take note, Chipotle, or yeah, any yeah. other place. Because all of them. Um, like you know the Chipotle by our house, right? Yes. It's got the worst parking lot. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the busiest. The busiest, biggest, busiest parking lot. And you have to park lo- really far away. Well, you know what I do is what? I illegally park right in front of it, but I don't leave my car. I just send my kid That's in what I have to, to do too. the food. But if you, I don't, don't, if, you, if you don't have somebody with you, what do you do? I know. And then... I, and plus getting into the the access is horrible. It is. Anyway, so, it is. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's so true. Right. Um, I love this so much. And I think this is, I know, like, I feel guilty for loving that because I think, what am I just going to like never interact <laughs> with people anymore? And I'm just going <laughs> to. Well, yeah, not at Chick-fil-A. I, I will interact with other people. But I mean, this is, it's just, it's taking the energy um, out of the things that I don't want to do and gives me more energy for the things I do want to do. Spend time with my family and not be crabby when I get home. <laughs> for That's example. Good. That's good. <laughs> so, yeah. I yeah. So, um on uh, between Tuesday and on uh, between Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Tuesday and Wednesdays are very busy for us. Mm-hmm. Um so, on Tuesdays I've just decided like we're going to probably just grab food somewhere. Mm. <laughs> on Tuesdays. Yeah. Nice. It's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. For for the foreseeable future anyway. So um, I just so I just figured this out this week. That's awesome. I've actually uh, I've heard so I've heard I think the podcast talk about the Chick-fil-A app or somebody oh, really? on the podcast has oh, talked okay. about it. So mm-hmm. now that you said it, though, because we just got a Chick-fil-A by us, you know, we're in the north. So I Chick-fil-A know. didn't hit Minnesota until a couple years ago. Yeah. And I mean, I there was one on the other side of the Twin Cities, and I was just <laughs> no. every time we were even close, I'd go get yeah. some. But yeah, and now there's one by our house, and it was mm-hmm. being built like right when you were leaving. I know, <laughs> I was kind of sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we've been going to Chick Fil A uh, now that well, we went once. Now that it's yeah. close to us, yeah. Um, but a couple times we've driven by, and the line has been too long, and we're like, forget yeah. it, we can't forget go there. it. I know. And even then, though, I think I think Chick Fil A does a great job of. Uh, I don't know if they do this in the Minnesota one, but for sure they like sometimes have people come outside in the drive-through 
just workers go to every car and get their orders. Yeah. yeah. So they do. They're, they're actually trying. really proactive in other ways, too. Yeah. So, but the app is just beyond <laughs> helpful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. For sure. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. We're glad you're here. Um, mm-hmm. You can find us on social media at Homeschool Unrefined. We're on Facebook and Inst- uh, Facebook and Instagram. We also have a website, which is homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can listen and find links to everything that we talked about. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor, and Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things. <laughs>